The Southern Ocean, also known as the Antarctic Ocean or the Austral Ocean, comprises the southernmost waters of the World Ocean, generally taken to be south of 60 degrees south latitude and encircling Antarctica. As such, it is regarded as the fourth largest of the five principal oceanic divisions, smaller than the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans but larger than the Arctic Ocean. This ocean zone is where cold, northward flowing waters from the Antarctic mix with warmer subantarctic waters. By way of his voyages in the 1770s, Captain James Cook proved that waters encompassed the southern latitudes of the globe. Since then, geographers have disagreed on the Southern Ocean's northern boundary or even existence, considering the waters as various parts of the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, instead. However, according to Commodore John Leach of the International Hydrographic Organization (IHO), recent oceanographic research has discovered the importance of southern circulation, and the term Southern Ocean has been used to define the body of water which lies south of the northern limit of that circulation. This remains the current official policy of the IHO, since a 2000 revision of its definitions including the Southern Ocean as the waters south of the 60th parallel has not yet been adopted. Others regard the seasonally fluctuating Antarctic convergence as the natural boundary. <laughs> definitions and use Borders and names for oceans and seas were internationally agreed when the International Hydrographic Bureau IHB, the precursor to the IHO, convened the first international conference on 24 July 1919. The IHO then published these in its Limits of Oceans and Seas, the first edition being 1928. Since the first edition, the limits of the Southern Ocean have moved progressively southwards. Since 1953, it has been omitted from the official publication and left to local hydrographic offices to determine their own limits. The IHO included the ocean and its definition as the waters south of 60 degrees south in its year 2000 revisions, but this has not been formally adopted, due to continuing impasses over other areas of the text, such as the naming dispute over the Sea of Japan. The 2000 IHO definition, however, was circulated in a draft edition in 2002 and is used by some within the IHO and by some other organisations such as the US Central Intelligence Agency and Merriam-Webster. Australian authorities regard the Southern Ocean as lying immediately south of Australia. The National Geographic Society does not recognize the ocean, depicting it if at all, in a typeface different from the other world oceans, instead, it shows the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans extending to Antarctica on both its print and online maps. Map publishers using the term Southern Ocean on their maps include Hema Maps and Geonova. Pre-20th century definitions Southern Ocean is an obsolete name for the Pacific Ocean or South Pacific, coined by Vasco Nunez de Balboa, the first European to discover it, who approached it from the north. The South Seas is a less archaic synonym. A 1745 British Act of Parliament established a prize for discovering a northwest passage to the Western and Southern Ocean of America. Authors using Southern Ocean to name the waters encircling the unknown southern polar regions used varying limits. James Cook's account of his second voyage implies New Caledonia borders it. Peacock's 1795 Geographical Dictionary said it lay, "...to the southward of America and Africa." John Payne in 1796 used 40 degrees as the northern limit, the 1827 Edinburgh Gazetteer used 50 degrees. The Family Magazine in 1835 divided the Great Southern Ocean", into the «Southern Ocean» and the «Antarctic Sick Ocean» along the Antarctic Circle, with the northern limit of the Southern Ocean being lines joining Cape Horn, the Cape of Good Hope, Van Diemen's Land and the south of New Zealand. The United Kingdom's South Australia Act 1834 described the waters forming the southern limit of the new colony of South Australia as «the Southern Ocean». The Colony of Victoria's Legislative Council Act of 1881 delimited part of the division of Bairnsdale as, "...along the New South Wales boundary to the Southern Ocean". 1928 delineation In the 1928 first edition of Limits of Oceans and Seas, the Southern Ocean was delineated by land-based limits, Antarctica to the south, and South America, Africa, Australia, and Broughton Island, New Zealand to the north. 
The detailed land limits used were from Cape Horn in South America eastwards to Cape Agulhas in Africa, then further eastwards to the southern coast of mainland Australia to Cape Leeuwin, Western Australia. From Cape Leeuwin, the limit then followed eastwards along the coast of mainland Australia to Cape Otway, Victoria, then southwards across Bass Strait to Cape Wickham, King Island, along the west coast of King Island, then the remainder of the way south across Bass Strait to Cape Grimm, Tasmania. The limit then followed the west coast of Tasmania southwards to the South East Cape and then went eastwards to Broughton Island, New Zealand, before returning to Cape Horn. 1937 delineation The northern limits of the Southern Ocean were moved southwards in the IHO's 1937 second edition of the Limits of Oceans and Seas. From this edition, much of the ocean's northern limit ceased to abut land masses. In the second edition, the Southern Ocean then extended from Antarctica northwards to latitude 40 degrees south between Cape Agulhas in Africa long, 20 degrees east and Cape Leeuwin in Western Australia long, 115 degrees east, and extended to latitude 55 degrees south between Auckland Island of New Zealand 165 or 166 degrees east east and Cape Horn in South America 67 degrees west, as is discussed in more detail below see section on 2002 delineation Prior to the 2002 draft edition the limits of oceans explicitly excluded the seas lying within each of them. The Great Australian Bight was unnamed in the 1928 edition, and delineated as shown in the figure above in the 1937 edition. It therefore encompassed former Southern Ocean waters as designated in 1928 but was technically not inside any of the three adjacent oceans by 1937. In the 2002 draft edition, the IHO have designated seas as being subdivisions within oceans, so the bite would have still been within the Southern Ocean in 1937 if the 2002 convention were in place then. To perform direct comparisons of current and former limits of oceans for example to compare surface areas it is necessary to consider, or at least be aware of, how the 2002 change in IHO terminology for seas can affect the comparison. 1953 delineation The Southern Ocean did not appear in the 1953 third edition and a note in the publication read, The Antarctic or Southern Ocean has been omitted from this publication as the majority of opinions received since the issue of the second edition in 1937 are to the effect that there exists no real justification for applying the term ocean to this body of water, the northern limits of which are difficult to lay down owing to their seasonal change. The limits of the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans have therefore been extended south to the Antarctic continent. Hydrographic offices who issue separate publications dealing with this area are therefore left to decide their own northern limits Great Britain uses latitude of 55 south. Instead, in the IHO 1953 publication, the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans were extended southward, the Indian and Pacific Oceans which had not previously touched pre-1953, as per the first and second editions now abutted at the meridian of South East Cape, and the southern limits of the Great Australian Bight and the Tasman Sea were moved northwards. 2002 delineation The IHO readdressed the question of the Southern Ocean in a survey in 2000. Of its 68 member nations, 28 responded, and all responding members except Argentina agreed to redefine the ocean, reflecting the importance placed by oceanographers on ocean currents. The proposal for the name Southern Ocean won 18 votes, beating the alternative Antarctic Ocean. Half of the votes supported a definition of the ocean's northern limit at 60 degrees south with no land interruptions at this latitude, with the other 14 votes cast for other definitions, mostly 50 degrees south, but a few for as far north as 35 degrees south. A draft fourth edition of Limits of Oceans and Seas was circulated to IHO member states in August 2002 sometimes referred to as the 2000 edition, as it summarized the progress to 2000. It has yet to be published due to areas of concern by several countries relating to various naming issues around the world, primarily the Sea of Japan naming dispute, and there have been various changes, 60 seas were given new names, and even the name of the publication was changed. A reservation had also been lodged by Australia regarding the Southern Ocean limits. 
Effectively, the third edition, which did not delineate the Southern Ocean, leaving delineation to local hydrographic offices, has yet to be superseded. Despite this, the fourth edition definition has partial de facto usage by many nations, scientists, and organizations such as the U.S. The Central Intelligence Agency World Factbook uses Southern Ocean, but none of the other new sea names within the Southern Ocean, such as Cosmonauts Sea and Merriam-Webster, scientists and nations, and even by some within the IHO. Some nations' hydrographic offices have defined their own boundaries, the United Kingdom used the 55 degrees south parallel for example. Other organizations favor more northerly limits for the Southern Ocean. For example, the Encyclopædia Britannica describes the Southern Ocean as extending as far north as South America, and confers great significance on the Antarctic convergence, yet its description of the Indian Ocean contradicts this, describing the Indian Ocean as extending south to Antarctica. Other sources, such as the National Geographic Society, show the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans as extending to Antarctica on its maps, although articles on the National Geographic web site have begun to reference the Southern Ocean. In Australia, cartographic Geographical authorities define the Southern Ocean as including the entire body of water between Antarctica and the south coasts of Australia and New Zealand, and up to 60 degrees s elsewhere. Coastal maps of Tasmania and South Australia label the sea areas as Southern Ocean, while Cape Leeuwin in Western Australia is described as the point where the Indian and Southern Oceans meet. A radical shift from past IHO practices (1928–1953) was also seen in the 2002 draft edition when the IHO delineated seas as being subdivisions that lay within the boundaries of oceans. While the IHO are often considered the authority for such conventions, the shift brought them into line with the practices of other publications e.g. the CIA World Fact Book which already adopted the principle that seas are contained within oceans. This difference in practice is markedly seen for the Pacific Ocean in the adjacent figure. Thus, for example, previously the Tasman Sea between Australia and New Zealand was not regarded by the IHO as being part of the Pacific, but as of the 2002 draft edition it is. The new delineation of seas being subdivisions of oceans has avoided the need to interrupt the northern boundary of the Southern Ocean where intersected by Drake Passage which includes all of the waters from South America to the Antarctic coast, nor interrupt it for the Scotia Sea, which also extends below the 60th parallel south. The new delineation of seas has also meant that the longtime named seas around Antarctica, excluded from the 1953 edition the 1953 map did not even extend that far south, are automatically part of the Southern Ocean. History of exploration Unknown southern land Exploration of the Southern Ocean was inspired by a belief in the existence of a Terra Australis, a vast continent in the far south of the globe to «balance» the northern lands of Eurasia and North Africa, which had existed since the times of Ptolemy. The doubling of the Cape of Good Hope in 1487 by Bartholomew Dias first brought explorers within touch of the Antarctic cold, and proved that there was an ocean separating Africa from any Antarctic land that might exist. Ferdinand Magellan, who passed through the Strait of Magellan in 1520, assumed that the islands of Tierra del Fuego to the south were an extension of this unknown southern land. In 1564, Abraham Ortelius published his first map, Typus Orbis Terrarum, an eight-leaved wall map of the world, on which he identified the Regio Patalis with Locatch as a northward extension of the Terra Australis, reaching as far as New Guinea. European geographers continued to connect the coast of Tierra del Fuego with the coast of New Guinea on their globes, and allowing their imaginations to run riot in the vast unknown spaces of the South Atlantic, South Indian, and Pacific Oceans. They sketched the outlines of the Terra Australis incognita, unknown southern land a vast continent stretching in parts into the tropics. The search for this great south land was a leading motive of explorers in the 16th and the early part of the 17th centuries. The Spaniard Gabriel de Castilla, who claimed having sighted «snow-covered mountains» beyond the 64 degrees south in 1603, is recognized as the first explorer that discovered the continent of Antarctica, although he was ignored in his time. In 1606, Pedro Fernández de Quiros took possession for the King of Spain all of the lands he had discovered in Australia del Espíritu Santo the New Hebrides and those he would discover, even to the Pole. 
Francis Drake, like Spanish explorers before him, had speculated that there might be an open channel south of Tierra del Fuego. When Willem Schouten and Jacob Le Maire discovered the southern extremity of Tierra del Fuego and named it Cape Horn in 1615, they proved that the Tierra del Fuego archipelago was of small extent and not connected to the southern land, as previously thought. Subsequently, in 1642, Abel Tasman showed that even New Holland Australia was separated by sea from any continuous southern continent. <laughs> South of the Antarctic Convergence The visit to South Georgia by Anthony de la Roche in 1675 was the first ever discovery of land south of the Antarctic Convergence i.e. in the Southern Ocean, Antarctic. Soon after the voyage cartographers started to depict Roche Island, honoring the discoverer. James Cook was aware of La Roche's discovery when surveying and mapping the island in 1775. Edmund Haley's voyage in HMS Paramour for magnetic investigations in the South Atlantic met the pack ice in 52 degrees south in January 1700, but that latitude he reached 140 miles off the north coast of South Georgia was his farthest south. A determined effort on the part of the French naval officer Jean Baptiste Charles Bouvet de Lozier to discover the South Land. Described by a half legendary, Seer de Ganival, resulted in the discovery of Bouvet Island in 54 degrees 10 s, and in the navigation of 48 degrees of longitude of ice cumbered sea nearly in 55 degrees south in 1730. In 1771, Yves Joseph Kerguelen sailed from France with instructions to proceed south from Mauritius in search of a very large continent. He lighted upon a land in 50 degrees south which he called South France, and believed to be the central mass of the southern continent. He was sent out again to complete the exploration of the new land, and found it to be only an inhospitable island which he renamed the Isle of Desolation, but which was ultimately named after him. <laughs> south of the Antarctic Circle The obsession of the undiscovered continent culminated in the brain of Alexander Dalrymple, the brilliant and erratic hydrographer who was nominated by the Royal Society to command the transit of Venus expedition to Tahiti in 1769. The command of the expedition was given by the Admiralty to Captain James Cook. Sailing in 1772 with resolution, a vessel of 462 tons under his own command and adventure of 336 tons under Captain Tobias Furneaux, Cook first searched in vain for Bouvet Island, then sailed for 20 degrees of longitude to the westward in latitude 58 degrees south, and then 30 degrees eastward for the most part south of 60 degrees south, a lower southern latitude than had ever been voluntarily entered before by any vessel. On 17 January 1773 the Antarctic Circle was crossed for the first time in history and the two ships reached 67 degrees 15 s by 39 degrees 35 e, where their course was stopped by ice. Cook then turned northward to look for French southern and Antarctic lands, of the discovery of which he had received news at Cape Town, but from the rough determination of his longitude by Kerguelen, Cook reached the assigned latitude 10 degrees too far east and did not see it. He turned south again and was stopped by ice in 61 degrees 52 s by 95 degrees east and continued eastward nearly on the parallel of 60 degrees south to 147 degrees east on the 16th of March the approaching winter drove him northward for rest to New Zealand and the tropical islands of the Pacific in November 1773, Cook left New Zealand, having parted company with the adventure, and reached 60 degrees south by 177 degrees west, whence he sailed eastward keeping as far south as the floating ice allowed. The Antarctic Circle was crossed on 20 December and Cook remained south of it for three days, being compelled after reaching 67 degrees 31 s to stand north again in 135 degrees west, a long detour to 47 degrees 50 s served to show that there was no land connection between New Zealand and Tierra del Fuego. Turning south again, Cook crossed the Antarctic Circle for the third time at 109 degrees 30 w before his progress was once again blocked by ice four days later at 71 degrees 10 s by 106 degrees 54 w. This point, reached on 30 January 1774, was the farthest south attained in the 18th century. With a great detour to the east, almost to the coast of South America, the expedition regained Tahiti for refreshment. 
In November 1774, Cook started from New Zealand and crossed the South Pacific without sighting land between 53 degrees and 57 degrees south to Tierra del Fuego, then, passing Cape Horn on 29 December, he rediscovered Roche Island renaming it Isle of Georgia, and discovered the South Sandwich Islands named Sandwich Land by him, the only ice-clad land he had seen, before crossing the South Atlantic to the Cape of Good Hope between 55 degrees and 60 degrees. He thereby laid open the way for future Antarctic exploration by exploding the myth of a habitable southern continent. Cook's most southerly discovery of land lay on the temperate side of the 60th parallel, and he convinced himself that if land lay farther south it was practically inaccessible and without economic value. Voyagers rounding Cape Horn frequently met with contrary winds and were driven southward into snowy skies and ice encumbered seas, but so far as can be ascertained, none of them before 1770 reached the Antarctic Circle, or knew it, if they did. In a voyage from 1822 to 1824, James Weddell commanded the 160-ton brig Jane, accompanied by his second ship Beaufoy captained by Matthew Brisbane. Together they sailed to the South Orkneys where sealing proved disappointing. They turned south in the hope of finding a better sealing ground. The season was unusually mild and tranquil, and on 20 February 1823 the two ships reached latitude 74 degrees 15 s and longitude 34 degrees 16 minutes 45 seconds west the southernmost position any ship had ever reached up to that time. A few icebergs were sighted but there was still no sight of land, leading Weddell to theorize that the sea continued as far as the South Pole. Another two days sailing would have brought him to Coates Land to the east of the Weddell Sea, but Weddell decided to turn back. <laughs> first sighting of land The first land south of the parallel 60 degrees south latitude was discovered by the Englishman William Smith, who sighted Livingston Island on 19 February 1819. A few months later Smith returned to explore the other islands of the South Shetlands archipelago, landed on King George Island, and claimed the new territories for Britain. In the meantime, the Spanish Navy ship San Telmo sank in September 1819 when trying to cross Cape Horn. Parts of her wreckage were found months later by sealers on the north coast of Livingston Island South Shetlands. It is unknown if some survivor managed to be the first to set foot on these Antarctic islands. The first confirmed sighting of mainland Antarctica cannot be accurately attributed to one single person. It can, however, be narrowed down to three individuals. According to various sources, three men all sighted the ice shelf or the continent within days or months of each other, von Bellingshausen, a captain in the Russian Imperial Navy, Edward Bransfield, a captain in the British Navy, and Nathaniel Palmer, an American sealer out of Stonington, Connecticut. It is certain that the expedition, led by von Bellingshausen and Lazarev on the ships Vostok and Murny, reached a point within 32 kilometers (20 miles) from Princess Martha coast and recorded the site of an ice shelf at 69 degrees 21 minutes 28 seconds south, 2 degrees 14 minutes 50 seconds west, that became known as the Fimble Ice Shelf. On 30 January 1820, Bransfield sighted Trinity Peninsula, the northernmost point of the Antarctic mainland, while Palmer sighted the mainland in the area south of Trinity Peninsula in November 1820. Von Bellingshausen's expedition also discovered Peter I Island and Alexander I Island, the first islands to be discovered south of the Circle. <laughs> Antarctic expeditions In December 1839, as part of the United States Exploring Expedition of 1838–42 conducted by the United States Navy sometimes called the Wilkes Expedition, an expedition sailed from Sydney, Australia, on the sloops of war USS Vincennes and USS Peacock, the brig USS Porpoise, the full-rigged ship Relief, and two schooners Sea Gull and USS Flying Fish. They sailed into the Antarctic Ocean, as it was then known, and reported the discovery of an Antarctic continent west of the Balleny Islands", on 25 January 1840. That part of Antarctica was later named, "...Wilkes Land", a name it maintains to this day. Explorer James Clark Ross passed through what is now known as the Ross Sea and discovered Ross Island both of which were named for him in 1841. He sailed along a huge wall of ice that was later named the Ross Ice Shelf. Mount Erebus and Mount Terror are named after two ships from his expedition, HMS Erebus and Terror. 
The Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition of 1914, led by Ernest Shackleton, set out to cross the continent via the Pole, but their ship, the Endurance, was trapped and crushed by pack ice before they even landed. The expedition members survived after an epic journey on sledges over pack ice to Elephant Island. Then Shackleton and five others crossed the Southern Ocean, in an open boat called James Caird, and then trekked over South Georgia to raise the alarm at the whaling station Gritviken. In 1946, U.S. Navy Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd and more than 4,700 military personnel visited the Antarctic in an expedition called Operation Highjump. Reported to the public as a scientific mission, the details were kept secret and it may have actually been a training or testing mission for the military. The expedition was, in both military or scientific planning terms, put together very quickly. The group contained an unusually high amount of military equipment, including an aircraft carrier, submarines, military support ships, assault troops and military vehicles. The expedition was planned to last for eight months but was unexpectedly terminated after only two months. With the exception of some eccentric entries in Admiral Byrd's diaries, no real explanation for the early termination has ever been officially given. Captain Finn Ron, Byrd's executive officer, returned to Antarctica with his own expedition in 1947–1948, with Navy support, three planes, and dogs. Ron disproved the notion that the continent was divided in two and established that East and West Antarctica was one single continent, i.e. that the Weddell Sea and the Ross Sea are not connected. The expedition explored and mapped large parts of Palmer Land and the Weddell Sea coastline, and identified the Ron Ice Shelf, named by Ron after his wife Edith, Jackie, Ron. Ron covered 3,600 miles by ski and dog sled, more than any other explorer in history. The Ron Antarctic Research Expedition discovered and mapped the last unknown coastline in the world and was the first Antarctic expedition to ever include women. Recent history The Antarctic Treaty was signed on 1 December 1959 and came into force on 23 June 1961. Among other provisions, this treaty limits military activity in the Antarctic to the support of scientific research. The first person to sail single-handed to Antarctica was the New Zealander David Henry Lewis, in 1972, in a 10-metre steel sloop ice bird. A baby, named Emilio Marcos de Palma, was born near Hope Bay on 7 January 1978, becoming the first baby born on the continent. He also was born further south than anyone in history. The MS Explorer was a cruise ship operated by the Swedish explorer Lars Erik Lindblad. Observers point to the explorer's 1969 expeditionary cruise to Antarctica as the frontrunner for today's sea based tourism in that region. The Explorer was the first cruise ship used specifically to sail the icy waters of the Antarctic Ocean and the first to sink there when she struck an unidentified submerged object on 23 November 2007, reported to be ice, which caused a 10 by 4 inches by 10 centimeters gash in the hull. The Explorer was abandoned in the early hours of 23 November 2007 after taking on water near the South Shetland Islands in the Southern Ocean, an area which is usually stormy but was calm at the time. The Explorer was confirmed by the Chilean Navy to have sunk at approximately position, 62 degrees 24 south, 57 degrees 16 west, in roughly 600 metres of water. Geography. <laughs> The Southern Ocean, geologically the youngest of the oceans, was formed when Antarctica and South America moved apart, opening the Drake Passage, roughly 30 million years ago. The separation of the continents allowed the formation of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. With a northern limit at 60 degrees south, the Southern Ocean differs from the other oceans in that its largest boundary, the northern boundary, does not abut a landmass as it did with the first edition of Limits of Oceans and Seas. Instead, the northern limit is with the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans. One reason for considering it as a separate ocean stems from the fact that much of the water of the Southern Ocean differs from the water in the other oceans. Water gets transported around the Southern Ocean fairly rapidly because of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current which circulates around Antarctica. Water in the Southern Ocean south of, for example, New Zealand, resembles the water in the Southern Ocean south of South America more closely than it resembles the water in the Pacific Ocean. 
The Southern Ocean has typical depths of between 4,000 and 5,000 meters (13,000 and 16,000 feet) over most of its extent, with only limited areas of shallow water. The Southern Ocean's greatest depth of 7,236 meters (23,740 feet) occurs at the southern end of the South Sandwich Trench, at 60 degrees 00 s (024 degree W). The Antarctic continental shelf appears generally narrow and unusually deep, its edge lying at depths up to 800 meters (2600 feet) compared to a global mean of 133 meters (436 feet). Equinox to equinox in line with the sun's seasonal influence, the Antarctic ice pack fluctuates from an average minimum of 2.6 million square kilometers, 1.0 times 10 to the 6 square miles in March to about 18.8 .8 million square kilometers, 7.3 times 10 to the 6 square miles in September, more than a sevenfold increase in area. Topic: <laughs> Subdivisions of the Southern Ocean. Subdivisions of oceans are geographical features such as seas, straits, bays, channels, and gulfs. There are many subdivisions of the Southern Ocean defined in the never approved 2002 draft fourth edition of the IHO publication Limits of Oceans and Seas. In clockwise order these include with IHO subdivision chartlet numbers in parenthesis the Weddell Sea 10.1 the Lazarev Sea 10.2 the Reeser Larsen Sea 10.3 the Cosmonauts Sea 10.4 the Cooperation Sea 10.5 the Davis Sea 10.6 Trioshnikova Gulf 10.6.1 the Mawson Sea 10.7 the Dumont d'Urville Sea 10.8 the Somov Sea 10.9 the Ross Sea 10.10 McMurdo Sound 10.1 0.1, the Amundsen Sea 10.11, the Bellingshausen Sea 10.12, part of the Drake Passage 10.13, Bransfield Strait 10.14, and part of the Scotia Sea 4.2. A number of these, such as the 2002 Russian proposed Konsmonaut Sea, Cooperation Sea, and Somov mid 1950s Russian Polar Explorer Sea are not included in the 1953 IHO document which remains currently in force, because they received their names largely originated from 1962 onward. Leading geographic authorities and atlases do not use these latter three names, including the 2014 10th edition World Atlas from the United States National Geographic Society and the 2014 12th edition of the British Times Atlas of the World, but Soviet and Russian issued maps do. Topic: Natural resources. The Southern Ocean probably contains large and possibly giant oil and gas fields on the continental margin. Placer deposits, accumulation of valuable minerals such as gold, formed by gravity separation during sedimentary processes, are also expected to exist in the Southern Ocean. Manganese nodules are expected to exist in the Southern Ocean. Manganese nodules are rock concretions on the sea bottom formed of concentric layers of iron and manganese hydroxides around a core. The core may be microscopically small and is sometimes completely transformed into manganese minerals by crystallization. Interest in the potential exploitation of polymetallic nodules generated a great deal of activity among prospective mining consortia in the 1960s and 1970s. The icebergs that form each year around in the Southern Ocean hold enough fresh water to meet the needs of every person on Earth for several months. For several decades, there have been proposals, none yet to be feasible or successful, to tow Southern Ocean icebergs to more arid northern regions, such as Australia, where they can be harvested. Natural hazards Icebergs can occur at any time of year throughout the ocean. Some may have drafts up to several hundred meters. Smaller icebergs, iceberg fragments, and sea ice, generally 0.5 to 1 meter thick, also pose problems for ships. The deep continental shelf has a floor of glacial deposits varying widely over short distances. Sailors know latitudes from 40 to 70 degrees south as the Roaring Forties, Furious Fifties, and Shrieking Sixties, due to high winds and large waves that form as winds blow around the entire globe unimpeded by any land mass. Icebergs, especially in May to October, make the area even more dangerous. The remoteness of the region makes sources of search and rescue scarce. 
Topic: <laughs> Physical Oceanography. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Antarctic Circumpolar Current and Antarctic Convergence. The Antarctic Circumpolar Current moves perpetually eastward, chasing and joining itself, and at 21,000 km miles in length, it comprises the world's longest ocean current, transporting 130 million cubic meters per second of water 100 times the flow of all the world's rivers. Several processes operate along the coast of Antarctica to produce, in the Southern Ocean, types of water masses not produced elsewhere in the oceans of the Southern Hemisphere. One of these is the Antarctic bottom water, a very cold, highly saline, dense water that forms under sea ice. Associated with the circumpolar current is the Antarctic convergence encircling Antarctica, where cold northward flowing Antarctic waters meet the relatively warmer waters of the subantarctic. Antarctic waters predominantly sink beneath subantarctic waters, while associated zones of mixing and upwelling create a zone very high in nutrients. These nurture high levels of phytoplankton with associated copods and Antarctic krill, and resultant food chains supporting fish, whales, seals, penguins, albatrosses and a wealth of other species. The Antarctic convergence is considered to be the best natural definition of the northern extent of the Southern Ocean. Upwelling Large-scale upwelling is found in the Southern Ocean. Strong westerly eastward winds blow around Antarctica, driving a significant flow of water northwards. This is actually a type of coastal upwelling. Since there are no continents in a band of open latitudes between South America and the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, some of this water is drawn up from great depths. In many numerical models and observational syntheses, the Southern Ocean upwelling represents the primary means by which deep dense water is brought to the surface. Shallower, wind-driven upwelling is also found off the west coasts of North and South America, Northwest and Southwest Africa, and Southwest and Southeast Australia, all associated with oceanic subtropical high-pressure circulations. Some models of the ocean circulation suggest that broad-scale upwelling occurs in the tropics, as pressure-driven flows converge water toward the low latitudes where it is diffusively warmed from above. The required diffusion coefficients, however, appear to be larger than are observed in the real ocean. Nonetheless, some diffusive upwelling does probably occur. <laughs> Ross and Weddell gyres The Ross gyre and Weddell gyre are two gyres that exist within the Southern Ocean. The gyres are located in the Ross Sea and Weddell Sea respectively, and both rotate clockwise. The gyres are formed by interactions between the Antarctic Circumpolar Current and the Antarctic Continental Shelf. Sea ice has been noted to persist in the central area of the Ross Gyre. There is some evidence that global warming has resulted in some decrease of the salinity of the waters of the Ross Gyre since the 1950s, due to the Coriolis effect acting to the left in the Southern Hemisphere and the resulting Ekman transport away from the centers of the Weddell Gyre. These regions are very productive due to upwelling of cold, nutrient rich water. Climate Sea temperatures vary from about minus 2 to 10 degrees Celsius, 28 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Cyclonic storms travel eastward around the continent and frequently become intense because of the temperature contrast between ice and open ocean. The ocean area from about latitude 40 south to the Antarctic Circle has the strongest average winds found anywhere on Earth. In winter the ocean freezes outward to 65 degrees south latitude in the Pacific sector and 55 degrees south latitude in the Atlantic sector, lowering surface temperatures well below 0 degrees Celsius. At some coastal points, however, persistent intense drainage winds from the interior keep the shoreline ice free throughout the winter. Biodiversity Animals. <inaudible> 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 A variety of marine animals exist and rely, directly or indirectly, on the phytoplankton in the Southern Ocean. Antarctic sea life includes penguins, blue whales, orcas, colossal squids and fur seals. The emperor penguin is the only penguin that breeds during the winter in Antarctica, while the Adelie penguin breeds farther south than any other penguin. 
The rockhopper penguin has distinctive feathers around the eyes, giving the appearance of elaborate eyelashes. King penguins, chinstrap penguins, and gentoo penguins also breed in the Antarctic. The Antarctic fur seal was very heavily hunted in the 18th and 19th centuries for its pelt by sealers from the United States and the United Kingdom. The Weddell seal, a true seal, is named after Sir James Weddell, commander of British sealing expeditions in the Weddell Sea. Antarctic krill, which congregates in large schools, is the keystone species of the ecosystem of the Southern Ocean, and is an important food organism for whales, seals, leopard seals, fur seals, squid, ice fish, penguins, albatrosses, and many other birds. The benthic communities of the seafloor are diverse and dense, with up to 155,000 animals found in one square meter (10.8 square feet). As the seafloor environment is very similar all around the Antarctic, hundreds of species can be found all the way around the mainland, which is a uniquely wide distribution for such a large community. Deep sea gigantism is common among these animals. A census of sea life carried out during the International Polar Year and which involved some 500 researchers was released in 2010. The research is part of the Global Census of Marine Life and has disclosed some remarkable findings. More than 235 marine organisms live in both polar regions, having bridged the gap of 12,000 kilometers (7,456 miles). Large animals such as some cetaceans and birds make the round trip annually. More surprising are small forms of life such as mudworms, sea cucumbers, and free-swimming snails found in both polar oceans. Various factors may aid in their distribution, fairly uniform temperatures of the deep ocean at the poles and the equator which differ by no more than 5 degrees Celsius, and the major current systems or marine conveyor belt which transport egg and larva stages. <inaudible> Birds The rocky shores of mainland Antarctica and its offshore islands provide nesting space for over 100 million birds every spring. These nesters include species of albatrosses, petrels, skuas, gulls and terns. The insectivorous South Georgia pipit is endemic to South Georgia and some smaller surrounding islands. Freshwater ducks inhabit South Georgia and the Kerguelen Islands. The flightless penguins are all located in the southern hemisphere, with the greatest concentration located on and around Antarctica. Four of the 18 penguin species live and breed on the mainland and its close offshore islands. Another four species live on the subantarctic islands. Emperor penguins have four overlapping layers of feathers, keeping them warm. They are the only Antarctic animal to breed during the winter. <laughs> fish There are relatively few fish species in few families in the Southern Ocean. The most species-rich family are the snailfish Liparidae, followed by the cod icefish and eelpout Zorcidae. Together the snailfish, eelpouts and notothenioids which includes cod icefish and several other families account for almost nine-tenths of the more than 320 described fish species of the Southern Ocean tens of undescribed species also occur in the region, especially among the snailfish. Southern Ocean snailfish are generally found in deep waters, while the icefish also occur in shallower waters. Icefish Cod icefish as well as several other families, are part of the Notothenioidae suborder, collectively sometimes referred to as icefish. The suborder contains many species with antifreeze proteins in their blood and tissue, allowing them to live in water that is around or slightly below 0 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit. Antifreeze proteins are also known from Southern Ocean snailfish. The crocodile icefish family also known as white-blooded fish, are only found in the Southern Ocean. They lack hemoglobin in their blood, resulting in their blood being colorless. One Chanichthyidae species, the mackerel icefish Champsicephalus gunnari, was once the most common fish in coastal waters less than 400 meters (1312 feet) deep, but was overfished in the 1970s and 1980s. Schools of icefish spend the day at the seafloor and the night higher in the water column eating plankton and smaller fish. There are two species from the genus Dysostichus, the Antarctic toothfish Dysostichus and the Patagonian toothfish Dysostichus elegenoides. 
These two species live on the seafloor 100 to 3000 meters, 328 to 9843 feet deep and can grow to around 2 meters, 7 feet long weighing up to 100 kilograms, 220 pounds, living up to 45 years. The Antarctic toothfish lives close to the Antarctic mainland, whereas the Patagonian toothfish lives in the relatively warmer subantarctic waters. Toothfish are commercially fished, and overfishing has reduced toothfish populations. Another abundant fish group is the genus Notothenia, which, like the Antarctic toothfish, have antifreeze in their bodies. An unusual species of icefish is the Antarctic silverfish, Pleurogramma antarcticum, which is the only truly pelagic fish in the waters near Antarctica. Topic: <laughs> Mammals. Seven pinniped species inhabit Antarctica. The largest, the elephant seal Marunga leonina, can reach up to 4,000 kg 8 pounds, while females of the smallest, the Antarctic fur seal Arctocephalus gazella, reach only 150 kg pounds. These two species live north of the sea ice, and breed in harems on beaches. The other four species can live on the sea ice. Crabeater seals and Weddell seals form breeding colonies, whereas leopard seals and Ross seals live solitary lives. Although these species hunt underwater, they breed on land or ice and spend a great deal of time there, as they have no terrestrial predators. The four species that inhabit sea ice are thought to make up 50% of the total biomass of the world's seals. Crabeater seals have a population of around 15 million, making them one of the most numerous large animals on the planet. The New Zealand sea lion hoakeri, one of the rarest and most localised pinnipeds, breeds almost exclusively on the subantarctic Auckland Islands, although historically it had a wider range. Out of all permanent mammalian residents, the Weddell seals live the furthest south. There are ten cetacean species found in the Southern Ocean, six baleen whales, and four toothed whales. The largest of these, the blue whale Balanoptera musculus, grows to 24 meters (79 feet) long, weighing 84 tons. Many of these species are migratory and travel to tropical waters during the Antarctic winter. Topic: <inaudible> Invertebrates. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Arthropods. Five species of krill, small free-swimming crustaceans, have been found in the Southern Ocean. The Antarctic krill superba is one of the most abundant animal species on Earth, with a biomass of around 500 million tons. Each individual is 6 cm long and weighs over 1 gram the swarms that form can stretch for kilometers, with up to 30,000 individuals per one cubic meter (35 cu feet), turning the water red. Swarms usually remain in deep water during the day, ascending during the night to feed on plankton. Many larger animals depend on krill for their own survival. During the winter, when food is scarce, adult Antarctic krill can revert to a smaller juvenile stage, using their own body as nutrition. Many benthic crustaceans have a non seasonal breeding cycle, and some raise their young in a brood pouch. Glyptonotus antarcticus is an unusually large benthic isopod, reaching 20 cm in, in length, weighing 70 g. Amphipods are abundant in soft sediments, eating a range of items, from algae to other animals. The amphipods are highly diverse with more than 600 recognized species found south of the Antarctic Convergence and there are indications that many undescribed species remain. Among these are several «giants», such as the iconic epimeriads that are up to 8 cm in long, slow-moving sea spiders are common, sometimes growing as large as a human hand. They feed on the corals, sponges, and bryozoans that litter the seabed. Others Many aquatic mollusks are present in Antarctica. Bivalves such as Adamasium kalbeki move around on the seafloor, while others such as Laternula elliptica live in burrows filtering the water above. There are around 70 cephalopod species in the Southern Ocean, the largest of which is the colossal squid Hamiltoni, which at up to 14 metres is among the largest invertebrate in the world. 
Squid makes up most of the diet of some animals, such as grey-headed albatrosses and sperm whales, and the warty squid ingens is one of the subantarctic's most preyed upon species by vertebrates, the sea urchin genus Abatis burrow through the sediment eating the nutrients they find in it. Two species of salps are common in Antarctic waters, Salpa thompsoni and Ilia rakovitsai. Salpa thompsoni is found in ice-free areas, whereas Ilia rakovitsai is found in the high-latitude areas near ice. Due to their low nutritional value, they are normally only eaten by fish, with larger animals such as birds and marine mammals only eating them when other food is scarce. Antarctic sponges are long lived, and sensitive to environmental changes due to the specificity of the symbiotic microbial communities within them. As a result, they function as indicators of environmental health. <laughs> environment Current issues Increased solar ultraviolet radiation resulting from the Antarctic ozone hole has reduced marine primary productivity by as much as 15% and has started damaging the DNA of some fish. Illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, especially the landing of an estimated five to six times more Patagonian toothfish than the regulated fishery, likely affects the sustainability of the stock. Long line fishing for toothfish causes a high incidence of seabird mortality. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> International agreements. All international agreements regarding the world's oceans apply to the Southern Ocean. In addition, it is subject to these agreements specific to the region. The Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary of the International Whaling Commission (IWC) prohibits commercial whaling south of 40 degrees south, south of 60 degrees south between 50 degrees and 130 degrees west. Japan regularly does not recognize this provision because the sanctuary violates IWC charter. Since the scope of the sanctuary is limited to commercial whaling, in regard to its whaling permit and whaling for scientific research, a Japanese fleet carried out an annual whale hunt in the region. On 31 March 2014, the International Court of Justice ruled that Japan's whaling program, which Japan has long claimed is for scientific purposes, was a cloak for commercial whaling, and no further permits would be granted. Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Seals is part of the Antarctic Treaty System. It was signed at the conclusion of a multilateral conference in London on of February 1972. Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources is part of the Antarctic Treaty System. The convention was entered into force on 7 April 1982 and has its goal is to preserve marine life and environmental integrity in and near Antarctica. It was established in large part to concerns that an increase in krill catches in the Southern Ocean could have a serious impact on populations of other marine life which are dependent upon krill for food. Many nations prohibit the exploration for and the exploitation of mineral resources south of the fluctuating Antarctic Convergence, which lies in the middle of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current and serves as the dividing line between the very cold polar surface waters to the south and the warmer waters to the north. The Antarctic Treaty covers the portion of the globe south of 60 degrees south. It prohibits new claims to Antarctica. The Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources applies to the area south of 60 degrees south latitude as well as the areas further north up to the limit of the Antarctic Convergence. Topic: <inaudible> Economy. <inaudible> Between 1 July 1998 and 30 June 1999, fisheries landed 119,898 tons, of which 85% consisted of krill and 14% of Patagonian toothfish. International agreements came into force in late 1999 to reduce illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, which in the 1998–99 season landed five to six times more Patagonian toothfish than the regulated fishery. Ports and harbors Major operational ports include, Rothera Station, Palmer Station, Villa Las Estrellas, Esperanza Base, Mawson Station, McMurdo Station, and offshore anchorages in Antarctica. Few ports or harbors exist on the southern Antarctic coast of the Southern Ocean, since ice conditions limit use of most shores to short periods in midsummer, even then some require icebreaker escort for access. 
Most Antarctic ports are operated by government research stations and, except in an emergency, remain closed to commercial or private vessels. Vessels in any port south of 60 degrees south are subject to inspection by Antarctic Treaty observers. The Southern Ocean's southernmost port operates at McMurdo Station at 77 degrees 50 S 166 degrees 40 e. Winter Quarters Bay forms a small harbor, on the southern tip of Ross Island where a floating ice pier makes port operations possible in summer. Operation Deep Freeze personnel constructed the first ice pier at McMurdo in 1973, based on the original 1928 IHO delineation of the Southern Ocean and the 1937 delineation if the Great Australian Bight is considered integral. Australian ports and harbours between Cape Leeuwin and Cape Otway on the Australian mainland and along the west coast of Tasmania would also be identified as ports and harbours existing in the Southern Ocean. These would include the larger ports and harbours of Albany, the Venard, Port Lincoln, Wyala, Port Augusta, Port Adelaide, Portland, Warrnambool, and Macquarie Harbour. Yacht races have been held in the Southern Ocean, such as the Volvo Ocean Race, Velux 5 Oceans Race, Vendée Globe, Jules Verne Trophy and Global Challenge. See also Extreme points of the Antarctic Seven seas Borders of the oceans List of seamounts in the Southern Ocean Notes References Baines, T. S., ed. 1878. Antarctic Ocean. Encyclopædia Britannica, 2, 9th ed., New York, Charles Scribner's Sons, p. 100. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Great Southern Ocean. Encyclopædia Britannica, 12, 11th ed., Cambridge University Press, p. 422. Brindley, David, ed. 2014. Antarctic Ocean, Austral Ocean, Southern Ocean. Style Manual, Washington, National Geographic Society, retrieved 31 July 2015. Further reading Guile, Sarah T. 2002. "'Warming of the Southern Ocean Since the 1950s'". Abstract, article. Science, Vol. 295 no. 5558 pp 1275 to 1277 Descriptive Regional Oceanography Pechernia Pergamon Press 1980 Matthias Tomchak and J Stuart Godfrey 2003 Regional Oceanography An Introduction See the site Topic External Links Oceanography Image of the Day, from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution The CIA World Factbooks Entry on the Southern Ocean The Fifth Ocean from Geography.about.com The International Bathymetric Chart of the Southern Ocean National Geophysical Data Center U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, Limits of Oceans and Seas second edition, extant 1937–1953, with limits of Southern Ocean. NOAA in situ Ocean Data Viewer Plot and Download Ocean Observations NOAA FAQ about the number of oceans Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources